Well, look at these people. Can you remember these good old days? I used to go to the US a lot and buy a lot of US cars and import them back and they were free to pick up. And the first thing I did when I got off that plane was shoot to any 7-Eleven store, pick up a freebie, mainly in Florida where I bought all the cars and limousines from and everything else. And that's the Canadian version. But like I said there, these were like Bibles to me. Even the UK version, I used to buy every single week. And of course, don't forget, you could always barter for a car with cash if you had it in your pocket. Those days are well gone. So let's get into this. Well, welcome back, people. Just came out to take this thing off charge. You see that's 100% now. Well, welcome back to the channel as I sit in the mighty Tesla. And I'm going to come back to this vehicle and I'm going to basically tell you my loss factor on this and i don't mind telling anybody because i love this car to death so i'm not really bothered about losing money on it all things have like depreciated and even this tesla model 3 here which is now let's get this right around 16 month old uh, 18 month old at the very very most but we'll come back to this lovely creature later depreciation wow it's happening to us all and i'm not just talking evs here i'm talking the whole of the motor trade, the whole caboose, the whole thing. I've been in and associated to the motor trade for many, many years. I did come out of it, went back in it, I bought and sold cars on the side and dodged and dealed. You know how you are when you're in your 20s, 30s and 40s, you want to make that dollar. So I went out to make it and I made a fair bit of money out of, out of used vehicles. Uh, never sold new ones, never, never was a, a car salesman, or did it all off my own back from my own front and back doors. I used to go across to the US and import vehicles, as a, if you're a watcher and subscriber of this channel. I've had to stop it here because I mentioned subscribers. Thank you so much for all of you who have stayed with me over the last two years. I'm now recognised from YouTube as an official creator. And it's an all big thank you to you who have done it for me. All 1,000 of you plus. Please stay with me. And welcome if you're new. You'd know that, I have mentioned it before. And so my knowledge of the American market is quite large. The same as his in the UK. But just let's get on to depreciation that you are feeling. It is all over the internet, including YouTube and the good old TikTokers have got a hold of it saying, oh, you've lost 50,000 on your 100,000 pound car. And there's even a guy out there now who's got a Porsche Taycan um, electric and he's having a good old moan on YouTube. I'm not going to tell you who it is because he's not really an EV fanatic. Uh, he's just got an EV and he's making this big thing about it, but I'm not going to go there. Hello, if you're watching that guy. So let me just make this point very clear from off the cuff here cars are a commodity they are never an investment now you're going to say oh dear what about classic cars what about the old 50s and 60s stuff at certain times but let's get on to the modern stuff let's get on to the brand new stuff first of all because it all affects the used stuff okay first of all mr musk he, he owes a massive apology to every tesla owner who bought their vehicles two, three, four months before he knocked off £7,000 and the same in US dollars in the US. He did it because he knew by even by knocking off that money, he was still making damn good dollar on every one of these that he sold. Because he panicked the whole motor trade by dropping, which was and now still is, the best-selling car in the world, the Model Y price and the Model 3. It upset a lot of people, including myself. And I will come up with the figures about this later on. Let's get back to everybody else's new prices. And even now, new prices are still falling. So, again, used are depreciating. Now, as you can see here, all the big boys are taking a massive hit on their new prices dropping them all the time and this is just a sample of what's happening in the usa the same's happening here in the uk now back strictly to the uk market these are the top 10 uh from number one being the toyota prius that have actually dropped in sales quotas by a long long way look at those percentages there 
All right, looking at a different list, here's your 1 to 10 on bestsellers for June 2023. July is just around the corner. I will probably put this out before July. So, but I'm gonna, like I've said there, I'm going to guess that July is going to be very similar. Ford Puma, one of the better selling cars in the UK. It's kind of like taking over where the Fiesta left off. Tesla Model Y, what a surprise there. Wow, top of the list, look, even beating the Puma. Now, don't forget, that is a full electric car there, whereas the Corsa, the Qashqai, uh, let's think about this, the Mini, the Toyota Yaris, and I believe the Vauxhall Mocha can all be bought as either full electric or hybrids, whereas the Tesla Model Y is just strictly available as a full electric car. So, done rather well there for Mr. Musk. So, there you see it. There's the latest on the bestsellers. So to summarise, we know that used car prices are falling back. We also know that the EV price is starting to like level out. Hybrids are always going to be the worst performers. And of course, big news for June, a full electric car being the best seller. Shocker, shocker there. And I believe it's going to be the same in July. Again, US side of the business, Auto Nation. Look at that loss or flatline. That ain't good, folks. And then you've got all these millions of cars sitting on the lots doing nothing. And I know that Dodge and Ram are suffering badly. Okay, before we can talk about the now and future, we have to talk about the past and why it's come about. The downward spiral that's happening now with auto prices came about because in the past we had a false pricing. Let's face it, everything went through the roof when the big old C came about. And I'm only going back say less than two years ago before it kind of like started to die down. Now, COVID brought a lot of problems for everybody and that included prices for cars. No one was buying new, so the used market went through the roof. And petrol being so expensive as it went to, obviously had an influence on what you bought. So EVs were starting to do rather well because it was seen that petrol was going up. So the EV sales, although very expensive cars, uh, two years ago, especially if people were buying new, the odd time, they were buying EVs and not fossil fuel cars. So that's the past. Now, since then, things have moved on and we're looking good, thank goodness, we're back to normal. And so prices are getting normalized from these stupid false highs of used cars, especially some diesels. Diesels have fell flat on their ass now, they're finished basically, and anyone, any fool buying a diesel now, either new or used, I feel that you're doing the wrong thing, but that's just me. So let's get back to now. Let's get back now to where we are. And there's about three or four points I'm gonna point out of why I think this is happening. A Porsche 911, the cheapest I've ever seen at auction. No one wants it, struggling to get bids. Range Rovers, free in as many weeks. 10, 11, 12 year old, three, four, five grand, struggling to get bids. What has gone wrong with the prestige market? Well, Car UK, there's a very simple answer to that why no one wants big prestige cars anymore, doing 10 to 15 to the gallon, and even worse, and being diesel on a Range Rover. And that is, there has been a serious cost of living crisis. Now, this is why I feel that cars are not selling in great numbers when it comes to having a diesel, when it comes to having a big engine, when it comes to having very expensive service costs and parts. It's obvious. If people haven't got the money, they ain't going to get out there and spend on a big so-called prestigious car. By the way there, Car UK, very informative if you need to know anything about auctions here in the UK. Go check him out. He's on YouTube. Uh, I'm not here to promote him. It's just that I did section him uh, a bit on my video, so I'm giving him the thumbs up for you to go and have a look. I, I do subscribe to him. Um, anyway, moving on fast. So yes, cost of living crisis. Let's face it, there's been some upsurges in mortgage rates and everything else, and the only people benefiting from that now are savers. You've got a big loan set out on a car and you just bought it, you are gonna have some serious loss factor. Now, obviously in a, in a, um, in a crisis as we are in now, as they keep calling it, I've never called it a crisis, but I'm just going on what the media say with all their hype. Um, the problem is, if prices keep going up, it does mean really, or it should mean, that the retail price of a car should go up with it. What's happened is, they're not selling. And with Elon Musk doing his thing, like I said earlier, they've all fell down in retail price. If you've got money, this is the time to get a great deal. And especially on an EV. But this so-called cost of living crisis we're in, you have to get to a barrier and think, 
no mortgage first food in me tummy you know bills heating etc etc then the car so i'm afraid that's the way it is so I, I this is why cars are taking a tumble and this is the point i'm making uh, that it's just not evs doing that so what i plan to do this morning I'm, I'm, we're going to have a drive out and you can come along and we're going to go up to uh, availablecar.com which is a quite big dealer about eight mile nine mile from where i live no other reason that it's the nearest so we'll go up have a ride out in the tesla see what we can see see what prices are how much they've lost since the new price on the sticker and it's great that ev prices are coming down because of this cost of living crisis and because of elon we'll talk about that later this post you know is all about the cost and the depreciation of cars in general including evs obviously things are what they are in the auto trade at the moment i wouldn't like to have this lot here owe me millions of pounds although i'm pretty sure a lot of this is underwritten by somebody say no more excuse the glasses by the way uh if you can't see me eyes you can't see me soul so they say but uh, no as you can see it's it's huge it goes on for a long 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 way 38 one new what do you expect it's an old jag 67 now but they're still asking 24 that will stay on the lot a long time trust me because big cars big engines and diesels are not selling great a 19 plate Vauxhall when it was new 25 grand now only worth 13 by the time you've done a deal so again 50% loss in what less than three and a half years uh, under four years so there is a loss factor to be had on every single used car and it's getting bigger and bigger so don't think it's just electric because it's not no doubt about it so if you've got a car like that losing 50 percent why would you not have an electric car from the 2020 plate losing the same it's no big deal i don't know what this thing about uh, this anti-ev thing is about its pricing yes there is a bigger loss because they cost more when new let's remember that folks here's another perfect example of depreciation and loss especially with diesels diesels are not the thing to buy at the minute folks and brand new it was uh, nearly 29k now it's only worth 16.7 and that's a 2020 plate so that's only just over three years old and because it's a diesel it's depreciated far more than a normal small petrol car would buy a small engine petrol if you're going to do something um, or even maybe an electric car hybrids are okay but again hybrids are going to be the next ones to lose so much value personally i'd go full ev and pay a bit more and keep it for the eight years that the battery's under warranty and suck it up i mean look at this look 21 again Vauxhall, very common Thirty-one thousand when new now worth only 21 a 10 grand loss on what might be just over a two-year-old car another one 20 plate 508 peugeot 36 37 going onward when new now only 22 and a bit wow 20 plate three-year-old this one lost 10 grand of its value it's a 70 plate as well going on for a third again 34 grand new look mercedes 69 plate now only worth 22 and that's top top money for this blimey you can get them cheaper than that but wow another massive loss 12 grand down the swanee anyway that's it from available car i'm saying bye-bye Okay, people, this brings me back to number two. Now, in that number one, it was quite obvious. I was just trying to make the point that we're all going through a, a financial situation. And that is why, obviously, all cars have dropped in value. Anyway, I hope I made that point quite clear. This second one's a little different. This second one is, uh, I ought to call it EV evolution, if that makes sense. Try saying that when you've had a few beers. Now, what I mean by EV evolution, I can hardly say it myself. We've moved on in EV land. Fossil fuel cars have become very stagnant all of a sudden, ice cars, whatever you want to call them. Whereas the electric car has gone forward. Now, this shows very, very easily in the pricing structure around EVs. And yes, I will gladly admit that over the last two years, EV prices have come down tremendously in comparison to fossil because fossil is it's like a stagnant thing. The EV revolution I'm talking about started with very high prices and but it's slowly coming down to the fact that eventually a new ev will be cheaper than a new ice car when that happens ice cars are doomed and finished 
trust me on that one. I'm going to start with, um, as an example, the Renault Zoe. Now, to my American subscribers, hello, welcome. Um, you probably won't even know what a, a Renault Zoe is. Well, a Renault Zoe is a small, compact, four-door car, hatchback thing made in France by Renault. They were quite forward when it comes to electric cars in Europe, and they made a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack one, and now they made a 41, and now they make a 51, or whatever it is, 52 I think it is, which will give you, in the summertime, a 200 mile range. Now, when that thing first came out, the top of the range GT line was 32,000 pound. Not worth it, we all know that. About three months later, you started seeing X demos come in at around 29, 28, I followed that price of that thing very much so because I was intrigued as a car for my wife, to be fair, but she did not want me to go out and spend the big money. The Renault Zoe, because of competition, has took a tumble in price. Even new now, I believe you can get the new GT line for around 27, and that's from a Renault dealer, 28 max. If you go on to sales sites, I will guarantee you now you can come up with a 2020, one of the first ones that came out, for less than 13k that is a bargain that is a little bargain because as i've shown you today when we've been around that so-called dealer we went to in part one there some of the cars there 2020 were around 12 11 12 13 14 anyway so to grab hold of a gt line spec and when i say gt don't expect it to be quick it's not the, the, the GT line was the, all the extras a bit and the sporty wheels and everything else. Forget that. The GT is not quick. So the basic Renault Zoe, even if the GT line now I'm talking about, is definitely available for 13. Guaranteed low miler for less than 14. Go take a look. They're a lovely little bargain at the minute. And that's a perfect example of what I mean by the EV evolution. Because the competition has got vast now for electric cars. Let's go back two years again, or even three years. Let's go early 2020 and see what was available for under 25K brand new. I'll sit here for a good 15 minutes while I think, and you do the same. Hmm, one. I've come up with one straight away. And that was the Volkswagen and the Seat Me uh, and the Volkswagen E Up. That was it. I think you can buy new at around 22k. There wasn't a great deal more out at that time for under 25 and definitely under 20. Forget it, new. Wow. Well, we progressed in EV land, whereas in fossil fuel car land and Iceland, they sell frozen food in the UK. We haven't progressed. Um, the EV evolution is getting prices down to where the normal working man can afford one. Whereas before, I must admit, you had to be in a very, very well paid job if you wanted to spend your 35, your 45, your 55 for a standard Tesla even. Let's face a few facts. Even the Tesla Model 3 was overpriced for a short time. I know that because I bought it when it was overpriced, but I wanted one. So what the hell? Okay. Before I wrap this up, I did promise I would tell you about my Tesla Model 3. And this is all because it's part of the EV evolution, if you want to call it back. I'll go back to that one about pricing. I wanted one of two colours. I wanted the black or I wanted the burgundy red. I'd have preferred the burgundy red, but hey, it's another story. I also wanted the 19-inch sport alloy wheels. So with the two options on top, it made it out that you paid a bit more. Anyway, when I wanted this Model 3, it was at the time when there was a 10 month wait if you ordered one new. I nearly went on the Tesla website, mapped it all out, did all the options, came in at 51,500, I believe, with the same options at that time, which was a lot of money. I always wanted one brand new, but I thought, well, let's just hold loose here and have a look at the used market. At that time, the used market was buoyant, but it was still very expensive. There was a Volkswagen dealer who had around 20 to 30 Teslas. Yes, a Volkswagen dealer. You will find it on the channel. If you want to nip back, in fact, it's, it's this one here, look. Yep, that, if you watch that video, it tells you all about my, my purchasing 
um, game and how I did it. And I, I was surprised my, one of my sons. Anyway, that's a different thing, but I've looked at it. Decent little post to watch. We went over, we, we purchased it. Now, black, silver 19 inch option wheels, everything else. I paid a retail of 47K for that vehicle. It was three months old with only 3000 miles on the clock. So virtually brand new. You couldn't tell it wasn't brand new, apart from the odd scratch. In with that price, I did have it fully detailed at their body shop before uh, I picked it up. After, actually, it was after I picked it up. I took it back and had it detailed. In with the price, which should have been around six fifty. dollars um, So that was in the price. So if you, if you take that off, then I paid about 46 and a bit for it. But anyway, let's say 47 round it off, keep it round. To me, that was an awful amount of money, the most money I've ever, ever spent on a car. But I wanted one. I wanted a Tesla. And I wasn't willing to wait 10 months for it. And so I made sure it had the newest and latest spec possible. That is, I wanted the LFP battery pack. If you don't know about LFP, go Google. And it also had the options I wanted. And it would it was the slightly facelift version, which had the all blacked out door handles and everything else, and the matrix headlights at the front, which are brilliant. Um, and you can do everything with it. You can even read it. Tesla on the wall if you turn your lights on and do a light show that's another thing so it was optioned up to the hilt and it was the latest battery pack possible from Tesla believe it or not it was a China made one which didn't concern me because I knew the China made one was better and still is better controversial here for my American friends than the American made one so I wanted it I bought it I treated myself it was out of my part of my pension part of what I've worked for all my life hard savings and everything else. So working class boy here who has ended up with this. So I treated myself, why not indeed? So I got it, ran it for three months. What happens? Mr. Musk all of a sudden decided to take a whopping 7,000 pound off the retail price of that same vehicle. At that time, it was 51 if you optioned it up. So instantly overnight, my 47K car became a 40K car because of the loss of the used marketplace over retail. That pissed me off, I'm gonna be very honest, but I was no different to any other person who ordered a Tesla at that time. Four months later after that, after breathing heavily and having three heart attacks, no, after breathing heavily and taking it all in, I thought, well, what is what is? I didn't buy this Tesla Model 3 to make money. To me, it is a commodity that I wanted one. I'm using it on a daily basis. I love it to death. Probably one of the best cars I've ever owned in my life. And it's still saving me a tiny bit of money on fuel. So it's doing its job perfectly. And I'm very happy to be an owner of a Tesla. So that same vehicle now, believe it or not, to buy with the options is 42 and a half. Okay, because he's bought it down a tiny bit more. Take the options off and you can get it for just under 40 grand, I think, about 39 and a bit, 39, 39 500. That's without the 19 inch wheels and without the black paint, simply. So you've got to, you've just got to look at things and put a smile on your face. I, you know, Mr. Tesla, Mr. Moss is going to give no rebates back for the people who bought at three month old or just bought new. Imagine buying new at 51 and a half, going 52. And then finding out he's knocked seven grand off the day after when you've already took delivery. Oh, that must have been nasty. Nasty. But I'm glad he did it in the long term because it's made the EV marketplace very, very less for the rich. I'm, you don't have to be rich to have an EV, but a lot of people think that. I'm not rich. I'm a working class lad who's saved and worked hard all my life for that vehicle. And I'm retired now, so why shouldn't I have it? But I'm not rich. I'm not even now. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm even like more poor now because I've just gone out and spent that money anyway I've had that vehicle nearly 18 months now and I will be doing a review at 18 months I did one at 12 months which is here you can watch that as well and I'm longing this out a bit but you can watch that that's the 12 month LFP battery model 3 2022 spec that's that one there so it hit me as much as it hit anyone else but I'm glad it happened because it's helped the whole EV marketplace of what Mr Musk has actually done so that's the story behind mine how much would it be worth used now I'd like to think around 32, 33. Things are evening out now and they're not going down much lower. They've kind of like come to a line where mm, enough's enough. It's now got, f it's just turned 14,000 mile on the clock at a year and a half, just under a year and a half old, um, about 14 month old, 15 month old. So 
Yeah, to get 32 back, I'd be quite happy, but it's not for sale. I'm waiting for the Highlander version to come out of the Model 3, the revamped one with the different lights and the tiny bit more range. Or I'm waiting for his Tesla 2 to come out. This will be this time next year. So the Model 3 is staying with me. I'll get another year, at least another nine months to a year motoring out of it. Probably put another 10 to 12,000 miles on the clock. Sell it at around 25K on the miles and hopefully get as much as I can for it. So that's my story about my Model 3 on the loss I made on that. So these people who say, oh, you've lost, you know, half the price of your... Mo no, I'm not. Nowhere near half price of my Model 3. So it's bull what some YouTubers and TikTokers are saying. Take no notice. They're not owners. They're not even EVers. They know nothing about EVs. They just take a glamorized story and try and glamorize it with fireworks even more. So don't even go there. So I'm glad I'm cleared that one up and I told you I was going to do it. Cheaper cars in the EV evolution have transpired to be good news. There is the MG4 now, which is not everyone's cup of tea, but it's about the same size as a Ford Focus. Decent looking, a bit sparse on the inside, but it's a 200 mile near enough range vehicle, even the, the standard model. It's decent looking, it does what it says on the can, and it's all yours for 24 and a half to 25K, brand new with warranty. That was never heard of two years ago to get that kind of caliber of car. Yes, it's made in China, but don't be put off by that because be ready for the Chinese revolution as well as the EV evolution. Wow, I'm getting things really mixed up tonight. Anyway, watch out for China. That's what I'm saying. That They are even going to make the market bound to even cheaper cars, all new. And you, it'll be very common to get uh, a decent family EV sub 22, 23K this time next year and the year after. Watch this space. So, point being made here, if you're getting new EVs at 24, 25K, then your used vehicles below that sector are gonna go down in price. It's obvious, that's what happens in any marketplace. So it's made the used market for EVs very, very good. And if I tell you something now, you, you probably wouldn't believe it. In California, if you use the federal grant that you get for buying an electric car, and then the state grant that you get for buying an electric car, and you buy the base model, a standard model, Model 3, in the white colour, you could probably walk away from Tesla with that brand new 15K, $15,000 that I've actually worked out if I'm doing the maths right. And I know you can definitely do it for $18,000 because I've seen it in a, in a couple of press pointers within the media of the auto industry at the moment. So with that kind of thing, it's bound to make EVs a far, far better deal than any ice car. And the ice drivers are now turning around and saying, well, this is not fair, this shouldn't be happening. And without those rebates, you know, the electric vehicles wouldn't sell. Well, I'm sorry, but here in the UK and in Europe, we don't have any rebates, yet electric cars are still selling very, very well. So that's your EV evolution. You've got more choice, you've got cheaper vehicles coming on board, so used prices are gonna drop. It's how things work. That's the marketplace. Demand and supply, supply and demand. So that's number two. I hope I've cleared that one up without getting too technical and too twisted in my words. Okay, this now brings me to point three. Um, I'm gonna call this fuel pricing. It's as simple as that because this is what it all boils down to. When I first had my very first EV nearly five years ago now, it was a Nissan Leaf. And I, I know that a lot of you know that because I've ranted about this vehicle many times before on the channel. It was the old style Nissan Leaf, you know, the, and it was the smallest battery one you could get. And uh, I bought it for the wife originally. I had a 2015 GT Mustang here in England at the same time. Um, and an SS Camaro, I believe. I think I just swapped the SS Camaro V8 2012 for the GT Mustang. I've had that many muscle cars and V8s, I can't remember. Anyway, I bought her this Nissan Leaf nearly five years ago. She fell in love with it. She loved it. And when we were charging that up, we were only paying around 17 pence a kilowatt. And at night time, it was only nine pence. Oh, the good old days. Wow. We had a dual fuel thing going on. Anyway, time will tell and time has told that prices have gone up for electricity. This is a fault of many, many things. And I'm going back, let's go back two years ago when the price hikes started to come in. 
and I started panicking when I was paying, uh, what did it go up to, 28 pence a kilowatt. Now, even at 28 pence a kilowatt, do the maths and what, what, and, and comparison to what petrol was and diesel. To run that EV was only around a third of the cost in actual fuel per mile over any any diesel or any small petrol car. So I was saving two thirds. So for every pound you were spending, or a nice person was spending on petrol and diesel, I was spending roughly around 30p. If you work that out, it was super cheap. This is what's happened again, slightly against EVs, is the fact that EVs have come down in price because of the, of the fuel thing. At the moment, petrol is, is stabilizing at around 145, 150 on average in the UK per litre. Sorry, USA people, that's per litre. Our electricity has gone up now to an average of around 34p where I'm living now, I'm paying a lot more than that, and it's a, a grievance. So I think this is this is number three for me, and that is that the, the EVs have come down in price because there's not that massive saving anymore on fuel. It's about comparable, or should I say, it's slightly better still. If you've got a great rate at home, it's going back that way, and electricity is only gonna come down in price. Fuel for ICE cars can only go one way, and that's back up. And as soon as that compar comparable on price hits, which I've just mentioned, and the fuel goes up for ICE cars and stays the same for EVs or even goes lower, which I believe it will do soon, that's even gonna make a bigger difference. So the choice and the cheaper fuel back for EVs will make it even better to buy one. So that's part of this. If you can get what I'm saying here, that's that's my number three. And I think that's it has affected EV sales slightly um, on the used market because anyone who's out there for a cheap EV wants it to run it and to save fuel as well. But yeah, this comparability thing is stopping people buying EVs. And I do believe that if it was the other way around, more EV sales would happen. It would be a more bubbled market. You'd get more options, more people would buy new. That means your used market's gonna grow, which would break, make prices even cheaper for EVs. So all you ice people out there having to go on YouTube and, and TikTok saying, you're losing all this money. And, it's great for EVs to come down in price because it gives people more choice to be able to go out and buy one. So your comments are going against your own thoughts of running an ICE car because the more people with EVs, the less people there are with ICE cars. Everything, all vehicles, be it vans, motorhomes, even caravans, anything associated with the motor trade will lose value, will lose its money. It is a commodity that you buy, you use, you throw away. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I've, um, I've ranted on enough as I normally do. Um, any comments, put below. If you agree with me or not, I'd love to hear. I like a bit of a debate. I don't like an argument, but I like a bit of a debate on my comments below. If you've not subscribed, where you've been, you should be by now. Love all you new subscribers. It's booming. Thank you so much for being involved. Oh, just a quick one. If you've not seen our playlist yet for our trip to the USA that we did in April along Route 66 and up to the Grand Canyon and into California and everything else, it's on the channel. Go please take a look. And then there's two about Tombstone and Boot Hill. And if you've seen the film Tombstone with Val Kilmer and everything else and Kurt Russell, you'll love them two posts. Go check them out. Anyway, I've said enough, I'm going. I'm gonna get myself a beer and chill out for the rest of the evening. Keep safe, people. Keep watching the channel. Look out for the next post.